In 2017, there were 341 eligible films for Academy Award nominations. Now, remove your buddy cop flicks, your superhero behemoths, your rom-coms where the guy meets the girl, loses girl, and then, surprise, gets the girl. You're pretty much left with the wannabe Oscar contenders. Plus, at least three Nicolas Cage movies, but that's a whole other thing. This group are all fighting for the same thing. Best Picture. So how does a film make it to the Dolby Theater to take home the big one? In the 90 years of Oscar's existence, what constitutes being the best picture has changed dramatically. In the 70s, that trend was stories of criminal and illegal activity. Jump to the 1980s, over-the-top dramas set in far-off lands were the rage. And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... This last decade has birthed a new trend. Enter the Film Festival. For the past 10 years, every film that has won Best Picture premiered at one of these world-renowned festivals. Film festivals offer a unique space where moviegoers, film critics, Academy members, and Hollywood stars all come together for a few short days to celebrate their films. Film festivals have become so widely popular that there's a film festival for everyone. Seriously, there's even a mustache film festival held in Portland, Maine. But of all the active film festivals, and trust me, there's a lot, we're going to focus on just five. First up, Sundance, the Utah sweater-wearing haven where films go to find a big studio buyer. These are what we'd call our true indie darlings. For the lucky few films that are purchased, they're guaranteed award season consideration come the end of the year. Next, we have the South of France summer bash that is Cannes. Dramatic, chic, and perhaps a little over the top, you never really know how the audience is going to respond, ranging from a chorus of boos to overwhelming applause. Now, fast forward a few months because the end of summer brings the trifecta of Oscar bait launching pads. Venice, Telluride, and the Toronto International Film Festival. If your film is serious about award season recognition, you're pulling out all the stops here. As summer comes to a close, the Venice International Film Festival kicks off. It's the world's oldest film festival and serves as a jumping off point for films with a solid chance of both award and commercial success. Nestled in the mountains of Colorado is the most intimate of the bunch, and in recent years, the most impactful. Telluride Film Festival tends to debut The Quiet Contender, who packs a big punch. Like this year's nominees, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water, and Darkest Hour. And lastly, TIFF. For two weeks in September, the entire industry packs its bags and heads to Canada. The beauty of the Toronto International Film Festival lies in the numbers. While Cannes is easily the most prestigious of the bunch, it's accessible to only around 30,000 film industry professionals. However, Toronto opens its doors to movie makers and movie consumers. In 2016, it's estimated there were 480,000 attendees. Bigger festival, bigger buzz. This is where Oscar dreams are made. And that's everyone, right? Wrong. There's a hidden path here that filmgoers and Academy members alike can't ignore. Premiering well before Oscar season, these films are more than just well-made. They have a message that connects with a moment in history. Most recently, a film like Get Out falls into this realm. Others include Mad Max, Fury Road, deemed by some as the feminist picture of the year, and the little-known winner, Titanic, for being, well, Titanic. With a new Oscar candidate premiering every week, studios need to find ways to keep their films at the center of the conversation. This falls to the shoulders of massive marketing campaigns in two phases. Phase one, getting the nomination. Much like any campaign, there are highly crafted slogans, strategic meet and greets, and advertisements begging Academy members for your consideration. Marketing teams can make or break the race with the right campaign strategy, as 2010's The King's Speech, Find Your Voice tagline did. Or by offering the Academy the right A-list access, like the artist did with a screening that was hosted by two of Charlie Chaplin's granddaughters. Phase two, 
go for gold, statues. Now, the film needs to find its second act to further resonate with the cultural zeitgeist. Take the 2016 contender, Lion. Initially pushed as a story of a boy reconnecting with his past, once the film locked in nominations, the Weinstein Company's pivot was motivated by President Trump's immigration ban. They went with a fresh framing of an immigrant's right to a new life, essentially telling Academy members a vote for Lion was a vote in support of immigrants. This politicized approach received mixed reviews from the Academy. But behind all these strategic moves lies one reoccurring theme which has been mentioned several times already. This is an all-exclusive Hollywood group consisting of 8,000 members. Yep, we're talking about the Academy. The Academy is split into 17 branches, each with their own set of requirements for entry. For example, directors need at least two directing credits, with one being in the last decade. You get the picture. Academy members can only nominate within their field, with the exception being Best Picture, which everyone can nominate. So after all the campaigning and film festivals, what does it take to actually get nominated? There are between five to 10 slots for Best Picture. And in order to receive a nomination, a film needs at least 5% of the votes from the Academy. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences includes more than 8,000 members. So around 400 votes will do the trick. This is assuming all 8,000 members vote. And after a film receives a highly coveted nomination for Best Picture, things get even more complicated in order to win. Like in politics, the popular vote will only get you so far. Unlike every other category, if you get the most votes, you win. But that's not the case for Best Picture. That's where something called preferential balloting comes into play. So, if there are 10 nominees, voters rank them from 1 to 10. If no nominee gets 50%, they drop the lowest ranked film and their votes are given to the second choice on their ballot. And they keep ranking the nominees until one finally rises above the rest, breaking through that 50% threshold, plus one extra for good measure. And when that finally happens, voila, you have your winner. After that, a slew of PricewaterhouseCoopers accountants officially tally the results, hand the winning cards over to the presenters, and assuming it all goes well... Moonlight. Spotlight. Birdman. 12 years a slave. Argo. A winner is declared. Thank you very much. And that is how you win Best Picture.